Hello and welcome to LaraNara.com and today we have a very exciting and highly requested video uh, by you and this is that of the proof that cancer might be a microparasitical infection and uh, we promised you this video some weeks ago when we published uh, a video on um, uh, cancer being a microparasitical infection. If you haven't watched this presentation yet, uh, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. I highly recommend that you go and do so now. And in this video, we're gonna show you the video microscopy of those microparasites, how they behave, and why there is uh, indisputable proof that cancer indeed is a microparasitical infection and that mainstream cancer research has not recognized it yet as such. And uh, this uh, theory was put forward by Dr. Weber and some other scientists from the Max von Pettenkoffer Institute, a very renowned institute in Munich, Germany, uh, and unfortunately has not gained much traction despite the proof that you're gonna see in this video. So. Without further ado, let's watch the video and what those scientists have observed and you can see for yourself and make up your own opinion and mind and then afterwards we're going to talk about some implications of that uh, uh, proof and uh, some consequences that we can draw from it and how we should behave and how sh we should treat cancer patients therefore. So without further ado, let's dive right in into the video proof of cancer as a parasitical infection. Let's go more than 30 years back in time. At the renowned Pettenkoffer Institute in Munich, Germany, three German medical doctors, Dr. Übing, Schiertz and Dr. Winter, were busy studying strange objects in human blood. They published their results in the renowned scientific journal Ärztliche Praxis uh, under the title Unusual Corpuscular Elements in Blood. Here is what the article read. When counting red blood cells in human blood that has been thinned with saline solution, we can often detect corpuscles, which cannot be categorized as blood cells. Those are oval or grape-shaped particles with a length of two to three thousand millimeters. We can observe those corpuscles in an astonishingly wide range of patients. We have also observed that those small oval forms can penetrate into red blood cells, which leads to a change in shape of the blood cells and the excretion of round objects after a certain amount of time. Research has also shown that the described objects are most probably cells of a parasitical nature. Blood infection according to Dr. Weber. Another medical doctor of that era, Dr. Alfons Weber, conducted similar experiments since the early 60s and realized before the doctors of the Max von Pettenkoffer Institute that the agile corpuscles were the cause of the blood infection. He filmed the experiment in the 60s to 80s and created thereby um, unique evidence. The microparasites described by Dr. Weber that you can see here can be found in the tissue of all cancer patients. Some examples. Here you can see a blood sample that has been dried over a flame. The patient suffers from leukemia. Here you see the blood sample of a patient suffering from liver cancer. Here the blood of a patient with bladder cancer. And this is tissue from the bladder carcinoma. You can clearly see the lively movements of the microbes. Here the diagnosis is that of lymph node metastasis. This is an almost mature gamete. He can be found in the space between the cells. And here a blood sample after mammal surgery. You can see a dying leukocyte. Patient is suffering from breast cancer. Diagnosis, cell complex of an uterus tumor.
This is the blood of a patient suffering from a lip carcinoma. And here cells of a lung carcinoma. In the lower left part you can clearly see red blood cells in whose inerts there are lively microparasites. Here tumor cell from a bladder carcinoma. You can clearly see the vacuoles. String-shaped structures. All recordings have one thing in common. You can see certain reoccurring types of microbes in all of them. There is no tumor tissue without these microbes. There is no blood of a cancer patient without those microparasites. The microparasites that have not yet been acknowledged by mainstream medicine as the cause of cancer have been comprehensively shown by Dr. Weber. They belong to two species. A. String shape grown up. Their length is two times that of a red blood cell. B. Stick shape. This is the most commonly found shape. The length of this gamete is about the diameter of a red blood cell. The youth form of both species are round or oval shaped. In normal blood tests, those parasites normally remain undetected, as they are hiding inside of the red blood cells. They are perfectly camouflaged by the exterior of the blood cell. The inner of the blood cell also offers plenty of food in the shape of oxygen and hemoglobin. The parasite enters as a so-called merocyte, the youth form into the cell and fattens up and grows to its full size. Two gametes inside of the blood cell can be seen here. When the cell has been eaten empty, the sexually mature gamete leaves the cell and looks for a partner to exchange DNA with. Let's have a closer look at the parasites. We can see the stick shape A and the string shape microbes. Both species start off as tiny oocytes or merocytes. The youth form is called a tropocyte, which grows up to become a sexually mature gamete. A gamete can be seen here inside of a red blood cell. It excretes one merocyte after the other into the blood plasma. And here you see the string shape type B. Stick and string shape start off as so-called merocytes or oocytes. Here the trophocyte of the string shape type. This is the mature string-shaped parasite, a so-called gamete. When endangered, the gamete splits up in its survival form, merocytes. Here you can see this division of the microbe as a pearl-like chain. In this way, this gamete becomes again small merocytes whereby each of those is the youth form of a gamete again. The legend for the following animation is as follows. Venus gas is depicted in blue, arterial gas in red, parasites are yellow and the vacuole is a dark red. Here you see the mother cell with its cell membrane, the nucleus and the cell plasma. The dots are depicted in the correct size relationship to the mother cell. The infection is first contained to the blood and lymphatic vessel system. Here we see a blood vessel with its walls 
and the pores through which gases can be exchanged. It is surrounded by the connective tissue. Even though the blood vessels have pores, they only allow for fluids and dissolved matter to pass through. Even the youth form of the parasite is just too big to pass through. That means that a person is infected by those parasites but not ill yet. The defense cells of the immune system keep the number of parasites in check. Here you can see such a polycell of the immune system. You can clearly observe the so-called pseudopodia, the tentacles that are covered in sticky slime with which the leukocyte catches intruders. The code microbes are then being transported into the innards of the cell and are thereby neutralized. It buzzes like a swarm of hornets in there as you can see. If everything works as planned, this cell arrives at the liver with its prisoners, where it is chemically destroyed by huge eating cells, called macrophages, as can be seen in the animation. How big the burden of the infected blood cells become in the end can be seen here. Dr. Weber has added a chemical to the blood sample called Peltauri. The leukocyte tries to defend itself against this poison by creating an immense inner pressure so that it becomes a fully blown up balloon. We can clearly see the microbes caught in his innards. In the end, the cell membrane cannot cope anymore with the double strain of inner pressure and poison from the outside and bursts. And now you can see the dense cloud of microbes that swarm out. They sense a second chance and flee in all directions away from their prison. New gametes are formed. Cancer according to Dr. Weber. Dr. Weber further inquired what would happen if the permeability of the blood vessels would change due to poisoning, radiation or other stress factors. Wouldn't the result be that parasites can now break out of the blood vessel into the nourishing connective tissue? The yellow dots represent parasites in this animation. In reality, they measure only a thousandth of a millimeter or even less. Through damaged areas of the capillaries, they can now enter into the surrounding tissue. We can see here the loops of the capillary vessels. Each human being has a network of capillary vessels that measure many thousands of kilometers in length. In this animation, we look at only a fraction of a millimeter. The red blood cells are loaded up with glucose and oxygen, seen here in red, the arterial track. This load is released into the connective tissue and afterwards the cell loads up with used up substances, seen here in blue, the veins. The connective tissue is kind of a cache. It is adjoined to the basal membrane and this is a layer of agarophile grid-like fibers on which the mother cells rest. They are surrounded in turn by the intracellular stream. Through this, the supply and disposal of food and waste products of the mother cell takes place. What happens when the parasites can follow the enticing trace of oxygen and nutrients to the mother cells? They first need a permeability of damaged capillaries, damaged connective tissue, then they can reach the basal membrane. This becomes easier the more damaged those areas are through viruses, radiation, poisons, etc.
A microbe has reached a mother cell here and got stuck to it. It is caught. Here we see the inner part of the mother cell. We can observe the nucleus in, in the center which is surrounded by the fluid called cell plasma. The cell membrane brings the caught microbe to the inside of the cell and wraps it with a so-called vacuole. As more and more parasites arrive in the intracellular stream, the mother cell has to keep on catching microbes. The first caught microbes can be wrapped in digestive vacuoles without a problem by the mother cell. Its ability to perform this task is however exhausted after a certain number of parasites. The cell can still catch the parasites but it is no longer able to vacuolize them and she becomes sick. The cell needs to keep on feeding though so more and more parasites enter the cell and accumulate without being vacuolized inside of the cell. The protein splitting enzymes increasingly poison the mother cell. Only two options remain now for the mother cell. First, she tries to neutralize the poisonous microbes and dies afterwards. Or secondly, she splits into two, thereby halving the number of parasites in each cell. She proliferates. And here we see the result of this second option. Out of one heavily infected cell, we get two lightly infected ones. Bursting leukocytes can be seen here. According to Dr. Weber, the lively corpuscles that you can see streaming out of the cell after it has burst are microbes that swim around in the blood plasma. Oncological knowledge. Other corpuscles, which you can see here, the imagination of the researchers of the Max van Pettenkofer Institute or the fantasy of Dr. Weber, today not even mainstream cancer research denies their existence. However, they are called differently. What Dr. Weber calls, for example, a gamete, the mainstream cancer researchers call cell intrinsic organelles. And what Dr. Weber calls the youth form, the mainstream calls apoptopic vesicules. Active movement. We can see here moving corpuscles inside of an immune cell. The mainstream cancer research believes those are the organelles of the cell and they move because this is part of the life process of the cell itself. Let's accept this theory for a moment. That would mean that if the cell dies, the organelles have to die as well. But exactly that does not happen. We let the cell burst. She's dead now. The supposed organelles would have to be dead as well. But the opposite happens. The corpuscles now jump to life even more and they even thrive. We can see how they swim lively and very actively in all directions away from the cell. Let's have a closer look at this. We can clearly see a flow direction in this image from the top right to the bottom left. This movement is an evaporation wave. In and with it all the components of the preparation flow passively in the same direction. Right here an immune cell has burst. Its content is set free. The supposed cell organelles spread in all directions. We can see this clearly some of them swim actively against the flow of the current and there is only one explanation for that. They are individual life forms with astonishing energy reserves by the way. That cell material could not behave like this. And now a nice example. Here we see a thoroposite the youth form of a gamete, which has been caught. 
The vacuole receives the parasite and we can clearly see its attempts to escape. We see the active movements of a life form. The assumption that this microbe is part of a dead cell is absurd. The parasitical microbes eat erythrocytes, red blood cells. Here we see a swarm of microbes. They have started eating up the hemoglobin uh, of the cells. Now they have already eaten up half of the erythrocyte and here only the empty membrane of the cell has been left over. The parasites have swarmed out and searched for new victims. The empty shell is the proof that the hemoglobin has been eaten up, meaning that the corpuscles have a metabolism. But even the grown-up parasites have a healthy appetite, as we can see. Here we see parasitical string-shaped microbes and here we see stick-shaped ones in an emptied membrane of a red blood cell. Here we can see a stick form parasite eating away at an erythrocyte. And here a string-shaped form pulls an erythrocyte behind it. A good example for active movement capabilities. The parasites eat, that's very clear. The damages to the blood tissue and the increase in number of the corpuscles is proportional. Blood tissue becomes corpuscle tissue. Multiplication. Like most single cell organisms, the corpuscles can either proliferate through cell division or sexual interaction. Here we can see conjugating gametes which press against each other tightly. This leads to oocytes developing from the fertilized gametes. This proliferation is difficult to detect under a light microscope. Easier to see is the cell division process. This takes place especially when the gamete is endangered, for example, when it is being uh, radiated or poisoned. This uh, is comparable to a ship sinking and everybody reaching for the lifeboats. The microbe packs its genetic material into many small, very resistant entities called the merozytes. Some gametes are not panicking. This one here takes its good time and releases piece by piece merozytes into the blood plasma. Let's hear what Dr. Weber had to say about this. Now we see how the cell material is being constricted while it fidgets around and stretches very clearly visible here. Now it is finally free and swims at the one o'clock position away while the other one continues its task while remaining docked to the erythrocyte. I hope this is enough to convince you of what we wanted to illustrate here. A confusion with cell-owned organelles is a pure joke. This statement can only be made by somebody who has no clue of video microscopy. Experiment A. Thick drop of blood, temperature 37 degrees Celsius. We take a blood sample from the patient and follow Dr. Weber's instructions to prove his theory. With the capillary blood we prepare a native blood spread. We pass the sample through the flame three to four times. The temperature reaches 140 to 160 degrees Celsius. The blood cells are now cooked and totally dried up. They are definitely dead with all of the existing organelles and vesicles. Then leave the sample to cool down to body temperature. 
We now use a sterile 1 ml syringe and fill it with 0.3 ml of natrium citrate solution Fresenius and 0.7 ml of sterile Ringa solution Fresenius. We mix the contents of the syringe well by shaking it. We now drip a bigger drop of this solution onto our sample and cover our sample afterwards. We look at the sample through the microscope in an oil emulsion at an uh, aperture of 2 to 2.5. The destroyed blood cells can be seen very nicely without any movement. After a short period of time, something starts to happen, however. The parasites inside of the bl dead blood cells come back to life. We can see them swimming around vividly and very actively. They are self-sufficient life forms and not apoptotic bodies. All human cell material is 100% dead in this sample. Experiment B is the same procedure as with A, but this time we use a very thin blood spread. Dr. Weber claims that so-called apoptotic bodies are independent life forms. To prove this, we destroy freshly taken blood by heating it up to 140 to 160 degrees Celsius again. But the parasitical microbes proved to be almost indestructible. Despite the heat, they remained unharmed and very alive, as you can see. Under the microscope, we can observe similar results to the ones in experiment A. We can see again the remains of the dead red blood cells and no movement. After the application of the Ringer solution, we can see again parasitical microbes that are clearly independent life forms. Amazing imagery, isn't it? And uh, if that doesn't convince you that cancer really is a microparasitical infection, then I don't know what else will. Uh, maybe that uh, you replicate those experiments shown at the end of the video by yourself. It's very easy as you have seen. You also don't need uh, high-end special equipment, a dark field microscope with 500 times uh, uh, magnification or a light microscope with thousand-fold magnification is sufficient. Just follow the instruction that you saw and you can replicate it by yourself and convince yourself that way. Um, also very compelling evidence for us is that this has been captured on film as you have seen and uh, classic mainstream cancer research theories such as uh, cancer being a viral infection or a genetic mutation have not been proven yet through video evidence. Um, we all have those microparasites in us, as you have seen in the video. This is the bad news, but the good news is that if we maintain our organism in a balanced, healthy state, those parasites are kept in check by our immune system and cancer is therefore truly avoidable. Uh, you can also uh, track the success of your chosen cancer therapy by performing those blood analysis uh, shown in the video on a regular basis. So you see if the count of microparasites goes down with your chosen therapy method, whether it is uh, mainstream or alternative, we of course uh, highly recommend that you use uh, holistic natural methods as uh, because as you have seen those microparasites are extremely resistant even to radiation and poisons um, and we can really help our organism remain healthy by avoiding burdens such as stress poisons, electromagnetic field radiation, and of course, the regular intake of strong and powerful natural supplements and healthy food and clean water and clean air, of course, and uh, loved ones around us. And uh, you can find uh, some amazing natural supplements, of course, at lyranara.me, such as our unique Vivid Artemisinin and um, also radiation emf radiation shielding devices such as the vita chip and natural energetic um, holistic therapy um, options at lyranara.com i'm gonna post all the links in the description box below if you need uh, personal consultation and advice or what is best for you 
please call us anytime at 1-888-773-3196. This is 1-888-773-3196 or via email at shop at lyranara.com. We love to talk to you about your personal needs, whether you are a professional or a patient and find the best solution for you. So do not hesitate, contact us. And as always, I hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you want to see more material like this, please like, share and subscribe. We put out videos every week. And uh, until next time, stay healthy.